My name is Gunters Abuls. I was born in Riga, the capital city of Latvia, and I left my country in 1944. First, we underwent a short period of communism from 1940 to 1941. Before the Soviet troops arrived in 1944, a lot of people had already left the country. All those who had left thought they would quickly come back. We followed the events in the Soviet area, hoping that things would work out. What happened took more time than expected, but happened in the end. At the end, it was clear to us that the system was disintegrating. For me, it occurred when the Berlin Wall fell, and I watched it on television. It's one of those rare moments in history where things seem to go in the right direction. Afterwards, you realize that it's not as marvelous as you had imagined, but experiencing this moment is extraordinary. It's very moving. It's a moment of liberation. When the Russian troops arrived in Riga in 1940, we didn't realize then that our freedom was vanishing. It was at a government level, not at a personal level. But after a few weeks, I went to the biggest bookshop in Riga, which still exists. On the table, in the middle of the main room, you could always find the latest books, imported ones. In Latvia, we used to publish a lot. The table was empty, just one translated book from Russia on display. I had the feeling that the noise around me had stopped, that I was enclosed, and this image will stay with me forever. With my friends from university, I was hired to supervise young communists in villas transformed into summer camps. Suddenly, a bus arrived. Some Russians who could speak some words of Latvian said, Tomorrow, we will evacuate our Red Youth because the German army is getting closer and we want to save the children. So we thought, save the children, they're lying. So we secretly asked everyone to come and pick up their children to prevent them from being taken. Some families came, others didn't. Then they arrived with their trucks. A friend of mine and myself went to the attic to hide. Fifty years after, I can still remember how scared we were, hiding behind chimneys. Where are the nannies? Where are the nannies? But we didn't want to be deported to Russia because we knew what it meant. So they left with the children 
and we waited all night. Waiting and waiting. In the morning, we went downstairs, and we walked back home, 20 kilometers away, slowly. We were so scared. We walked to Riga. But I didn't go back home. Nobody would be there. My parents had fled to the forest. We knew that deportations were being organized. That same day or the day after, the Germans arrived. They were awful to the Jews, but for others, it meant freedom from the Soviets. I took my bike and went to the countryside to meet my parents. When I arrived there, I listened to the radio, and they were announcing that after Stalin, it would be Hitler. And I thought, but they're the same. It's the same thing. They have come to settle here, not to free us from the Soviets. Later, my mother used to say, Darling, make good use of the China dinnerware and everything. And I followed her advice. Riga was a special case because it had been an international and cosmopolitan city before the war. But after the war, it had changed a lot. A city is made of people, not walls. It changed profoundly, becoming a dull, gray place like many Soviet towns. Empty stores, dull facades. I was so happy to go back to my country, but felt extreme sadness at the same time. I think we should face facts. A lot was destroyed, but a lot was added. Well, less was added. But you have to look at both sides, because our two countries need to put all this behind them. I always mention the case of France and Germany. They have managed to move on with the youth meetings, for instance. Latvia should also turn the page. We suffered a lot under the Soviets. Some Russians are unhappy now because they were born there, but don't feel at home because they are not made to feel welcome. We should organize events, not only for the Russian youth in Latvia, but also for Russians visiting from Moscow, Leningrad, etc. And that's how young people turn the page. Nowadays, young Russians say the 20th century didn't exist. It's a bit over the top, but upper-middle-class Russians often make this claim. Why not? All right, it's not completely true. However, we need to live our lives. Look to the future. And, and try to accept what happened, which was hard for everyone. <laughs>